You know, every time you prepare a speech, we recommend that you look at two main components, your content and your delivery. Which one do you think is more important in your speech? I'm sure you have an opinion. Well, so do we. So stick around. Uh, hi there. I'm Christine Harper. And I'm Ernie Davis. And we're here from Powerhouse, Powerhouse Motivations. Motivations. So this week, we're going to talk about content and delivery. Which one is more important in your speech? Mr. Davis, I think you have an opinion. Uh, let's hear what your opinion is. Christine, you know I have an opinion. And you know, I think the timing is perfect. I had my coffee this morning. I'm sitting there. I'm drinking my coffee. And I'm reading this article. Reading this article by this guy, Andy. Andy Kuchaveri. And Andy says that content wins the wallets of your customers. He says content is most important. And you know what? Since you were asking the question, you know, it, this is hard, but I think I'm going to have to go with Andy. I'm going to have to go to Andy. Unless you can convince me otherwise this morning, I'm going to go with Andy. And I'm going to say content, content, content. And listen, I know all you listening right now, I know you're wondering, you're like, what, what do you mean, Ernie? What, what is this content? What is the content? And the content that I'm saying is, hey, it's that stuff that you're giving out as you deliver. It's the facts, figures, quotes, and anecdotes that are going to make your presentation rock. You know, it's, it's, it's extremely important. Extremely important. Hmm. Well, while I do think that those things are important, because I was always the academic person, making sure we put together all the right information, I really think that it's the delivery of your speech that's going to make the biggest impact on your audience. No matter how many facts and figures you have, if you deliver it in a monotone voice, no one's going to pay attention and no one's going to remember what you said. Hmm. All right. So you're, you're breaking out a little bit of Maya Angelou and I like what you say it, right? I like what you say it, <laughs> you know, because that, that's a little Maya Angelou-ish to me. You know, <laughs> nobody's going to remember what you said. Use one of my favorite quotes against, against me, but I got to tell you, Facts, figures, quotes, and anecdotes. And you got to think about this because here's what it is. You know, and I think Andy may have something here when he says that content wins the wallets of your customers, your clients, your audience. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that content. When you stand up on stage and what you have to do is because, you know, when you're giving that dull, boring, dry, monotone presentation, that one that the seventh grade science teacher used to give that I talked about last week. When you're doing that, you're just regurgitating content that somebody else told you was good content. But what I've learned is that when you find the right content, when you find the right facts and figures that are going to be interesting to your audience, the facts that are going to be interesting, and you word those facts in a way that's interesting and thought provoking to your audience, then you get something. Okay. You know? So you made a good point. When you find the information, the content that mm -hmm. you are passionate about, mm -hmm. when you find something that really resonates with you, then mm -hmm. you'll be able to share it in a way, you'll be able to deliver it in a way that your audience will get it. So that, that I think we're saying the same thing there. No, I think you I think you're trying to tell us that the delivery is extremely important. And while I really want to get I really want to agree with you, Christine, because I made I made a video about a year ago where I said something. I said, is it is it the way that you deliver it? Is it what you say or how you say it is what the video mm -hmm. is? Called? And there's a link mm -hmm. up there. But it's, it's, it's the content, because think about this. You may have a friend. You know, everyone, you listen to everyone listening right now. Think about this. You have some friends and all they do all day is they talk and they talk, and they deliver, and they deliver, and they, their, their mouth is constantly yapping, but they're not saying anything interesting, anything new. They're not sharing any great ideas. They're just constantly going and going and going, and I've got friends like that, and I hopefully, if they're watching, they won't know that I'm talking about them, but I intentionally- <laughs> They will. I try to avoid them every time I can, because they're not giving me anything, any new knowledge. And you see, uh -huh. if you're going to be a great public speaker, one of the things you have to do is you have to know, hey, what, 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 what type of facts and figures and quotes are my, are my audience? What, what, what's, what are they interested in? You know, what kind of facts and figures can I give them? What type of statistics can I give them? You know, and how can I word those statistics in a way that's interesting and it's going to keep them engaged? Yes, that's an important part. So taking those facts and figures and adding the right language 
sometimes colorful language. I don't mean cursing colorful. I mean colorful language that really describes a situation, that helps tell a story, and mm -hmm. using your voice. Using your voice, sometimes you got to slow it down and lower your tone. And other times you have to speak up and you have to really make sure that your folks are following you. Hmm. So I think in integrating good content with the right voice, colorful language, gestures, mm -hmm. hand gestures, some people will stand at that podium and hold on for dear life. Okay. Not a yeah. good look. You need right. to be able to move and flow with your audience. Now, uh, I used to get this criticism a lot at my Toastmasters club. Use the whole stage. Walk around. Yep. Well, I don't like to do that for other reasons that we'll talk about on another video. But um, move a little bit. Move mm -hmm. enough that you are comfortable. Stay in your comfort zone go just a little bit outside of it, mm -hmm. but move enough to let the audience know that they're not looking at a robot. You know, I, I think that's, I think you've got something, Christine. I think you, you, you've got something. You're right, because you have to move a little bit and you have to fluctuate your voice. But if you don't have anything good to talk about, anything <laughs> good to share, you've got a problem that's going to have to be yeah, fixed. That's true. You're going to have yeah. a problem that's got to be fixed. You've got to make sure your content is right. You've got to make sure you've got the facts and the figures correctly. You've got to make sure that you're stating facts and you're giving out statistics that are going to stick. Now, a lot of you are listening. I know some of you, you go to different places and you hear people give testimonials. They give product testimonials. They give life testimonials. And a testimonial would be very, that's, that's what I call an anecdote. It's a personal story. It's a personal mm -hmm. story that you craft. And one of the things I want you guys to understand is that your story is your story. And you can word and say your story however you want to say your story because it's your story and you're sharing it from your own personal perspective, your own memory. And when you do that, you get an opportunity to make your story interesting. Yes. You yes. see, because you, you can walk from the left side of the stage and you can walk to the right <laughs> side of the stage and people are going to watch you walk around. But if you aren't sharing a good story, a good personal story that you have written down and you crafted to draw them in, you know, if you're not sharing a point when you're on the right side of the stage and you tell a little story to, 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 to enhance that point, and then you walk over a few meters to the left, you share another story, and mm -hmm. then you slowly walk over to the left a little bit further and you share another story and you make a point, <laughs> that's extremely important, and that's content. Extremely important. It's content. I think the walking from side to side, Christine, I have to go with you there because you've got the delivery there. But not only is it the facts, figures, quotes, and anecdotes, it's also the timing. Mm -hmm. I think it's the timing. I think it's so the I put that, I I put that timing under delivery because oh, when I'm looking at crafting a speech, okay, mm -hmm. my content is one solid piece of information that I want to make sure I get across to the to the audience okay. but my delivery says do i want to tell a joke first do mm -hmm. i want to tell a story second mm -hmm. how do i want to weave in some of those facts and figures mm -hmm. to make it interesting okay. so that's what the delivery portion of your speech is about so, so I, I want you i want you to vote right now hit like or hit all yeah, right, yeah, do that. In the comments, or write something in the comments and here's, tell us which one of us is here's what I want. the argument. I'm going to challenge you guys to do this. Christine, I'm going to win. Listen, if you think that, if you agree with Christine and you think that she's right, I want you to push the thumbs down button. But if you think that, if you think that I'm right, I want you to go ahead and push the up thumbs button. Push the up thumbs button. And if you not think there, both, not there. If you think we're both right. Go ahead and write a comment <laughs> down in the bottom. If you think that you have a better point, put that in the bottom. You know, okay. because Christine, this is this is an awesome this is an awesome discussion. I think we could probably go on all day about this. You know, but yeah. I think we're gonna have to agree to disagree because content is valuable, but in delivery is equally important. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm I'm a good guy, and you guys know I, I love working with Christine. And Christine, I love to let you win occasionally. So I'm gonna come to your side, and I'm gonna say that content and delivery are equally important. Content and delivery are equally important. If you're gonna really be a, a great 
motivational speaker, if you're going to be a motivational speaker, one of the four that we talked about last week, if you're going to be an informative motivational speaker, if you're going to be a persuasive motivational speaker, an entertaining motivational speaker, or an inspiring motivational speaker, the only way you're really going to be good is if you have good content, good facts, figures, quotes, and anecdotes, good ones that you really thought about. And you made those stories, you crafted your stories in a way that were interesting and engaging for your audience. And you delivered them in a way that Miss Harper's talking about. You know, you move from the left to the right. You use those facial gestures. Yes. You know, yes. You, you do that and I think you're gonna win. Because you one without the other. Yeah. Yes. You have to put it all together. One without the other is really of no value. And the people will come to hear your content, right? When you're advertising mm -hmm. the topic of mm -hmm. your particular speech. So mm -hmm. they work together. I gotta put out I gotta put out a warning out there, right? Because that's actually what that's actually what Andy was talking about in his article. And he was talking about content. But I have to I have to warn everyone. I gotta warn you guys who are listening right now. I want you to know that content is information. And information is the freest and most readily available thing on the internet. Everything that you're going to say, it's probably available somewhere online on the internet for free. It's on YouTube, Facebook, it's all out there. And so when you put your content together, the thing that you really have to do, is you have to do something like we said last week, Christine, they have to do something like we said last week. You have to make it yours. You have to make it yours. You have to put it in your voice and you have to deliver it in your own unique style, your own unique fashion the way that gives you a, it, it makes you who you are right mm -hmm. because that's right. something that's something people can't get anywhere else they can't get you anywhere else but they can get your information they just can't get your style i agree with that 100 percent um each one of us are individuals and we bring our own flavor to the game and it's important that you know what your flavor is and stick with it you don't have to imitate someone else. You don't have to try to be someone else. Be yourself. Awesome. I love that. I love that. Hey, if you guys love that, go ahead and if you haven't already, click that thumbs up button. Click it. If you've clicked it once, click it two more times. And you know, next week I think we I think we have to talk about the audience because you got this great content. You've talked about your delivery. You're putting your delivery together. And so I think we have to now talk about how do we find the right audience for your presentation? Okay. Man. I wish I wish everyone actually I want to invite everyone who's listening right now to join us on our next upcoming aspiring speakers master mastermind series, you know, because in that series, we really we really get into crafting your speech and helping you to figure out who's your audience, who's your right audience, who's the paying audience. But hey, join us next week. And I think that's what we should talk about. Christine, what do you think? I'm with it. I'll be here. Awesome. Until next time, folks. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.